Can you vote for this bill with a clear conscience? Hell no, you can't. All the people you reference in the middle class, I say, hell yes, they are going to be helped by this bill. They're putting it on the credit card and adding $2.3 trillion to the federal debt. Merry Christmas. Here's how confident House Republicans are that they have the votes to pass. Excuse me. All right, we're just doing a live shot. The yeas are 227 and the nays are 203. The conference report is adopted without objection. The motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. On February 1st, look at your paychecks because you'll see the tax relief we delivered today. All right, the House vote today, as you heard, 227 to 203. Twelve Republicans voted against the bill. The president tweeting right after this vote in the House. Congratulations to Paul Ryan, Kevin McCarthy, Kevin Brady, Steve Scalise, Kathy McMorris-Rogers, and all great House Republicans who voted in favor of cutting your taxes. There was one problem, that they probably are going to have to do it again, they will have to do it again if it's going to get to the president's desk. The Senate's getting ready to take it up, but it has to be changed because of rules and sent back to the House tomorrow morning. Let's bring in our panel back in the bureau. Jonah Goldberg, senior editor at National Review. Amy Walter, national editor for the Cook Political Report. And Charles Hurd, opinion editor for the Washington Times. You know, Amy, uh, it's a big moment here, obviously, and they're getting ready for the Senate vote, which Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is very confident about. Uh, but it's a bit of a process thing here. It is a bit of a process thing, but I think it's just a, a hiccup along the way, and we know that ultimately the vote's going to come out and Republicans will be where they are today, which is successful in passing tax legislation through the House, through the Senate, getting it to the president's desk by the end of the year, which, quite frankly, there were times, especially earlier this fall and in the summer, when the idea of a tax anything that said tax reform, tax cut, getting done by the end of the year looked like an impossibility. The fact is right now it is done. The question as we go forward, Republicans were successful in selling the tax bill to their own members, passing it. Now they've got to sell it to the American public that at best is skeptical of it. Yeah. Jonah? No, I think that's right. I think in a lot of ways there's a similarity here to Obamacare. This was a longly held ideological and political goal of a party. They, they, in pursuit of this goal, they went through an ugly process to pass what was, by the polls, unpopular legislation based on a bet that it would pay off. I think the Republicans think the bet is it's more it's not Obamacare, it's more like Bill Clinton's 1993 budget, which was a big mess too, but it got passed, and then the economy took off, and Bill Clinton got to take credit for it. I think the Republicans want to be able to take credit for a what they hope is going to be a roaring economy, but it is a big bet, and it is going to increase the deficit. Um, but all in all, I do think that the press and the Democrats have been so demagogic and overheated about all of this, talking about how it just robs the middle class. According to Brookings, which is not exactly a troglodytic right-wing think tank, 80 <laughs> percent of Americans are going to get some form of a, of a tax cut. Yeah, Charlie, you know, you move on to the next battle, which is just really now, the government shutdown. You know, they could have a big win tomorrow with the House passing final tax reform, heading to the president's desk, and then hit a brick wall with a government shutdown. It seemed the Senate Majority Leader seemed to suggest that they're kind of, he feels confident that he's got something behind the scenes with, with Chuck Schumer. Yeah, he didn't really want to uh, seem to uh, want to talk about uh, the, the specifics of that with you to, in your uh, interview tonight. Uh, but I do think that in the short term, uh, you know, they can celebrate something of a victory despite all of the cursing and caterwauling on the on the House floor from Democrats. Uh, if this does mean that uh, that it that it ignites the economy and and we go into the next election, and even more importantly, I think for Donald Trump going in, into the, uh, the 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 2020 election, and the economy is doing very very well, all of those uh, complaints that we've, we heard from Democrats today and all the caterwauling uh, will be forgotten uh, and these guys will have a, a much better footing. Remember, you know, uh, Democrats and the media and even Republicans are always very good at convincing themselves, convincing Republicans that whatever they've done, they're going to lose the next election because of what they've done. And in the case of Obamacare, when, you know, everybody said, oh, you, nobody got, got on board with Obamacare, you're going to lose. They won back the majority. And then after the shutdown, uh, they said, you're going to pay for this. And they, of course, then went on to reach the highest uh, majority that they ever had. So I think it's a little early to 
to, to uh, uh, try <laughs> be scaring uh, Republicans at this point. Yeah, Amy, the other thing that was newsy was that DACA is not going to come up before the end of the year, and they feel like they have some breathing room, even with Democrats, who obviously have some leverage here. Yeah, and I think even for Democrats, they've realized that shutting the government down, especially when you're ma trying to make the case against Republicans that they are looking out only for the special interests, they're looking out for wealthy and corporate interests, not the regular person, to shut the government down right before Christmas and essentially stop government benefits and the, the proceeds from the government going to folks right at the end of the year. I just think it's a terrible political argument. I don't think any side wins when you shut the government down. However, going into next year, this is going to be something of a fight, although here is a place if the president is really looking, as he said he is, in the next year to start reaching out and bringing Democrats in after going really on a Republican-only strategy, this would be the place to do it. When you look at the polling, you see that a majority of Americans believe that these uh, Americans, or these people who are here are basically Americans, even though they did not come to the country legally, and they want to see them stay here, not be kicked out of the country. I think when the president speaks on this, he can move his own party on this issue. You've seen that time and time again when the president says he likes something. Many members of the party see yeah. it differently when it comes from his mouth than when it comes from the mouths of Democrats. Jonah, for all the criticism of President Trump, how he does things, how he tweets things, how he talks about things, if you do the list and just take away the the wrapping paper around it, the list of things that have happened so far, uh, what do you think? I think it's a, it, it's, a, it's a pretty good list. Certainly it's a good list compared to what you th would have thought the list would be two months ago. As my colleague at National Review, Rich Lowry, says, the whole Butt Gorsuch line is now sort of over because he's got actually a pretty long list of things that he can tout um, and some campaign promises. The interesting thing to me is how it doesn't seem to be reflected in his approval rating. And it could be that while the hardcore 34, 36 percent base of the party is popping champagne right now, it could already be baked into a cake that a lot of the more moderate sort of suburban uh, Republicans that turned out in big numbers to vote against Roy Moore, that cost uh, Ed Gillespie his, the, his bid in Virginia, that those guys are already uh, pre-turned off to Trump, and it's going to take a lot of good things from the economy for them to be turned around. Charlie, quickly, I mean, well, the administration looks like it looks at what fake polls. He likes the polls he likes, and <laughs> and he doesn't like the other ones. But uh, it doesn't seem that they care. Sure, sure. But the problem here is, of course, that uh, he doesn't get very much very uh, good coverage. He doesn't get very much uh, credit for the things that he has accomplished. But I think that going forward, if if uh, uh, you know if people feel like that they're in a better shape, they, they, the 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 uh, polls don't matter that much.